Well, thank you for joining us for this first of our devotions uh, through Holy Week. And we're going to be journeying together through John chapter 12 and 13, which, which uh, details some of those events that led up to Jesus' crucifixion on Good Friday and his resurrection on Easter Sunday, which we will celebrate together. But Christians around the world through, um, through the last 2,000 years have marked these events of Holy Week in different ways. We're going to be praying every single morning at 8. We're going to be having our devotions around midday. We're going to be having prayer on, on Monday, Thursday evening and, and services on Good Friday and Easter Sunday. But we're so glad you can join us for this reflection where we're going to be looking at John chapter 12 verses 1 to 8. And my prayer is that as we, as we um, explore these events together, we will learn more about what it means to follow Jesus and to walk in his footsteps. Um, and especially in the times in which we find ourselves at the moment. And I'm going to pray for us as we come to read God's word. Father God, we thank you for your word, which is life to us, God. Um, Lord, thank you that your spirit um, just uh, illuminates your truth to us. God, I pray that you would lead each one of us through this holy week in which we find ourselves. And Lord, through the situation in which we find ourselves, may we learn more about what it means to follow Jesus in these days. Amen. So I'm gonna read John chapter 12, verses one to eight. So six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus has raised from the dead. And here the dinner was given in Jesus' honour. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him, objected, why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It's worth about a year's wages, he said. He didn't say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As a keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. And you know, we find Jesus at the beginning of Holy Week gathered with his friends and his disciples. And Jesus loved to just gather with people and spend time with them and, uh, and enjoy their company. And it's strange for us because we can't do that in the times we find ourselves in now. But Jesus still wants to spend time with each one of us. And we look forward to when we can gather together again when this is all over. But the timing is Jesus is about to enter into Jerusalem and the whole of his ministry and his life led up to this point where he was going to enter into Jerusalem and he knew what this meant for him. That, that there was no turning back. Once he'd gone into that city, uh, his, his crucifixion um, and, and all the events that surrounded that were, were inevitable. This was, this was the plan. And so Jesus must have had a heavy heart, even though those who were throwing this uh, celebration in his honour wouldn't have understood that. But yet Mary steps forward and she does this extraordinary act. She takes this bottle of nard. Now, you have to understand a pint of nard. Nard was made from the root of the nard plant in India. It was a very expensive liquid. As we are told, it was worth about a year's wages. This would have probably been you know, uh, the equivalent of Mary's life savings, maybe a family heirloom. Um, it would have been the most precious thing she owned. And what did she decide to do with it? She decided to open it and pour it over Jesus' feet. And then she did another extraordinary thing. She let down her hair. Uh, and, you know, that was a, not the sort of thing a woman did in those days. In fact, it could even have connotations that, you know, that she was a, a loose woman, as it were. And yet she does this, she lets down her hair, she doesn't care what others think, and she wipes Jesus' feet with her, his, her hair as this act of total and utter devotion. And Mary was used to spending time at Jesus' feet. We read in, in Luke chapter 10, she sat at Jesus' feet. We read in John 11, she fell at Jesus' feet. And now um, there's this extraordinary act of worship um, where she wipes Jesus' feet with her hair because she understood that the place that she wanted to live her life was at the feet of Jesus, that, that Jesus was her Lord and her master, and she wanted to show that devotion to him. 
And I wonder whether we would take all we had and pour it out at Jesus' feet this Holy Week. I wonder if we would lay all that we are at his feet. I wonder if we would totally devote our whole entire lives to him afresh as we, as we follow him, knowing that he was the one who poured out everything he had for us. You know, not worrying about the reactions of others. You know, others scoffed, others were shocked, others looked on um, and were horrified and, and, and said judgmental things about Mary's act. But Jesus understood that this was a significant act. You see, no one else realized, but she had, had somehow perceived something about the significance of this moment, this evening, and, and she, she did this act not knowing the full significance. But Jesus said she'd anointed him for burial because he knew what was coming and he knew the significance of this act. And when we worship God, there is nothing more significant in this world that we could be doing with our time than giving praise to the King of Kings. And, and so I want to encourage you this week in your worship, in your times of devotion, spend time at the feet of Jesus. Spend time uh, in devotion to him. I'm going to pray and, um, and, then, uh, and then this time will come to an end. But if you want to leave a comment in the comments section, if you want to leave a prayer, if you want to leave more thoughts on this act, please do. Um, but let's pray. Father, we thank you that our days are held in your hand, God. We thank you that everything we have comes from you. And Lord, we want to pour it all back to you, God. We want to be like Mary. We want to be extravagant in our worship. We want to be um, wholehearted in our devotion. Lord, we, we want to be exuberant in our praise of you. And Lord, we appreciate the significance of what you did for us. Um, Lord, help us to draw in this Holy Week. Uh, the full story and the full weight of what you did for us and Lord we pray that our response would be to pour out our lives for you thank you Lord that you're with us thank you Lord um, that even in this difficult time and this challenging season you're showing us more about what it means to follow you and so I pray that you bless us this day in Jesus name Amen <laughs>